Riddle of the Great Beings, Chapter 3 The three Agori sat on their mounts, frozen with fear. Before them stood dozens of wolves, their bodies a weird mixture of muscle and fur and dull metal. Their eyes were gleaming points of savage light in the darkness. Tada could smell their musky odour, mixed with the scent of cold iron. Watch out, whispered Cretaceous. They'll try to circle around us so we're surrounded. Then they'll attack. Thanks for the nature lesson, Kerbold answered. How do we get out of this? Right through them, suggested Tarduk. Maybe we can, I don't know, outrun them? Cretaceous patted the flank of his sandstalker. I don't think these animals are going a step closer to those things if they can help it. Tarduk wished he could come up with another idea. Going forward was out. Going backward meant trying to race across a narrow trail with a pack of wolves at their heels. If they didn't fall into a bottomless abyss, they would have the fun of being eaten. He couldn't believe their journey was coming to an end so soon, and in such a horrible way. Crotetius was the first to spot a new arrival. Something, no, someone, was coming up behind the wolf pack. The figure was bent and twisted and walked with a bad limp. He carried a staff in his left hand, and seemed to be relying on it to stay upright. Even with the moonlight, it was impossible to see the armoured being clearly. But then he spoke. Down! It was a simple word, but delivered in a voice that sounded to Tardark like the limbs of dead trees scraping against the shelter. To the amazement of the three Agori, the walls crouched down against the frozen ground. The figure started hobbling forward, moving unmolested through the wolves. All Tarduk could think of was Malum, who, rumour had it, now lived among the bestial Voroks. But it wasn't Malum coming toward them. Tarduk heard Kerbal gasp in recognition. The Agori from the ice village of Ikonox said, Thurel? But you're dead, the crippled warrior said. Close to it, perhaps but still among the living. Lost in the chaos of war was I, and left behind, bent and broken, when the fighting moved on. And here I have been ever since. It was too much for Cretaceous to take in. You've been living in these mountains with these... these... things? You are of the fire people, Sorel said, as if seeing the Agori's red armour for the first time. So you wouldn't know about the Iron Wolves, one of the great beings more efficient creations. I trained this pack, led them into battle, and when the world shattered, they stayed by my side. It was the wolves who brought me food and protected me from harm. And there were many in these mountains who would have done me harm. Sorel reached down and petted one of the wolves brushing his hand across fur and metal. Maybe you have forgotten, or you never knew, how things were before. Armies marching across the deserts, the jungles, the mountains, battling to claim the energy in the core of the world. The Element Lords led us into war, and when their actions destroyed the planet, they were trapped. Yes, they were trapped. Tarduk shivered. Was it getting colder, or was it fear that made him tremble? It would have been easy to blame the presence of Sorel and his pets, but no, it was getting colder. The wind was picking up, and snow had begun to fall. Lightly at first, then more heavily. Soon he could barely make out the ancient warrior and his wolves through the storm. Wait a minute, said Kerbold. I remember the war. I remember how it ended and I remember the Element Lords. But you said, were trapped? Sorel nodded his head, a painful exercise due to his injuries. I do not know why you have come here, but I tell you now to turn back. The Element Lords walk this planet once more, and the fortunate among you will die first. <sighs> A roar filled Tardak's ears. He looked towards the source of the sound. 
a massive wall of white was surging down the mountain, an avalanche of snow from which there could be no hope of escape. And standing atop of the mountain, watching as doom rushed down toward the Agori, stood a warrior made of ice. To be continued. <laughs>